Okay, so we continue with uh, Romeo and Juliet, um, and the sort of this sort of toxic masculinity of the battle between uh, between Romeo and uh, uh, Tybalt. So Tybalt really, uh, Mercutio decides to get in a fight um, with Tybalt, and Romeo tries to stop him. Um, uh, he, he, and he tries to tell him, listen, like, we're going to get in trouble with the police. You know, like, this is not like we're going to get, you know, we're going to get arrested. Um, this is really bad. I um, mean, in the fighting, Mercutio gets wounded. Um, and it's in, and it's in the wounding. Uh, this is, this is the famous, uh, the famous bit. Mercutio's death is a very famous kind of moment, Romeo and Juliet. Um, I am hurt, a plague on both your houses. I am sped. Um, uh, is he gone and have nothing? Right. He kind of can't believe it that like he got stabbed. Um, but Tybalt didn't get stabbed at all. Um, and Benvolio says, what, out there hurt? Because they, they can't tell how bad right now. And Mercutio, who loves to joke all the time, says, aye, aye, a scratch, a scratch. Mary, tis enough. Um, meaning enough to kill me. Um, meaning it's a small cut, it's a scratch. Um, and he's making, again, he, well, the thing about Mercutio is he just always jokes. He's so jokey. And Shakespeare has a number of characters like this, including Falstaff. Um, the nurse a little bit is like this too, although she's... Her jokes are not intentional. Um, <clears throat> but Shakespeare has these characters who just kind of can't stop joking. Um, they're just always joking all the time. They're never serious. Um, and Mercutio is, I have friends of mine that are like that. Um, and Mercutio is, is one of these. Um, so even when he's stabbed to death, he's making jokes. So he says, oh, it's a scratch, which is, um, Tybalt has like a title that I don't fully understand called like um, the King of the Prince of Cats. Um, and so he, he says he's been scratched by Tybalt because it's, it's a, um, he's like a cat. Um, and, and he says, art thou hurt? He says, well, it will serve. Meaning like, it's not a big cut, but it will kill. Um, so he continues to joke. Um, <clears throat> um, and he says the famous line of plague on both your houses, right? He says, he says, you know, uh, uh, you know, again, I think we all know what a plague is since we're currently living through one. Um, plagues will come up again in Romeo and Juliet in an interesting way. Um, but he says a plague on both your houses. He, he essentially says like, He's angry at them both for um, putting him in this position, right? That, that essentially they've, they've, they've killed him because the two families fighting with each other have now killed Mercutio. Um, and so he says a plague on both your houses, right? Like, just screw both of you. Um, he doesn't, he, he's, he's angry at everybody right now because he's dying. Um, uh, um, Tis enough. Where's my? He says, "Fetch a surgeon," and they 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 need to get a doctor to kind of help him. Um, and they, they don't really understand how bad hurt he is because Benvolio says, um, "Art thou hurt?" And Romeo says, "Courage, man. The hurt cannot be much." And then you know, Mercutio he has to talk. He has to be crazy all the time, and so he does it right here. He says, "No, tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but it is enough." Right? Meaning it's not that deep, but it's not that wide, as far as architecture is concerned. But it's you know, it will serve. It's enough to kill him. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. And it's a joke, because grave means, obviously, the grave is where you're buried when you die. So if you ask for him tomorrow, he'll be a grave man, because he's in the grave. But grave also means serious. Um, and Mercutio is never serious. He's always joking. He's always fucking around. And he says, ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. Um, because I'll be dead, but also, finally, I'll stop joking. Um, ask for me tomorrow, you shall find me a grave man. Um... I am peppered, I warrant, for this world, a plague on both your houses. Sounds, meaning God's wounds, it's just like, fuck. Um, a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat, to scratch a man to death, a braggart, a rogue, a villain that fights by the book of arithmetic. Um, and, and this is what he's mad about here is, um, what he's mad about here um, is, is that, that it's, it was so, he's frustrated that he got killed by such a worthless person as Tybalt. Um, and he calls him a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat, to scratch a man to death. Um, a rogue, a villain that fights by the book of arithmetic. Meaning he, he's making, he can't believe this, that the fancy sword guy with all of his fancy moves killed Mercutio. Um, um, and then there's a slightly more complicated twist here um, where Mercutio says, um, why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. Oh, I thought all for the best. Um, that, that Mercutio maybe, this is the tricky part, Mercutio maybe would not have been wounded had Romeo not tried to break up the fight. Um, if it was a fair fight, it would be different, right? If they were just sort of two guys fighting each other. Um, 
But what happened was is Romeo didn't want violence, and so he tried to break up the fight, and he kind of got in between them, um, and that allowed Tybalt to stab Mercutio and kill him. Um, one of the things that happens in Romeo and Juliet a lot all through the play is just it's a series of unfortunate events. Um, unf not Tragedy is supposed to be anchored in character. There's a lot of just bad luck. Um, in Romeo and Juliet, which is just, it's unlucky. Romeo tried to help, and then there were, he caused a mistake. Um, the the Friar Lawrence tries to help, but it causes, you know, all the death. Um, normally, tragedy is not about errors and mistakes, but rather about um, certain kinds of personalities that clash against, against each other, like Alphidius and, and Coriolanus um, are, are well, I guess I'd say the city of Rome and Coriolanus are sort of personality types that clash. Here, it's just it's just bad luck, um, which makes it a kind of frustrating play, um, but also kind of interesting in a lot of ways. Um, <clears throat> um, and he, he, he wants, again, he says, a plague on both your houses again, right, to curse them with diseases. They have made worms meet of me. Um, and then Romeo... Um, this gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, has got this mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, that an hour before had been my cousin, meaning cousin-in-law. Oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty. Here's, a, here's the key moment. This is the moment in the play that Romeo fails. Um, by the way, like, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of reasons why Romeo and Juliet end up dead. Some of you guys uh, enjoy blaming Friar Lawrence because he meddles and causes trouble. That's one reason why Romeo and Juliet end up dead. Um, the fact that their families are at war. It could be about sort of the parents' generation gets the children killed. Um, um, I don't want to overdo it, but there's something in here about climate change. It's kind of ridiculous for me to say that. But there's something about the fact that people have a hard time setting the world better for their children. Um, and and the, the Capulets and the Montagues, they, their, their fight is ancient. Um, it's been going on for decades, and it's just ruining their children's lives, just like all of our sort of polluting the atmosphere is like ruining the future for our children. Um, so there's all kinds of reasons to think about why Romeo and Juliet die. Well, there's another piece of bad luck, which is that when Friar Lawrence tries to tell Romeo about the um, fake death plan, um, the message doesn't reach him. Just bad luck. Um, there's quite a bit of things like that on the play, but to me, um, the, this is the fundamental moment. Um, it's not about bad. It does, there is bad luck involved, but really the tragedy is not caused by bad luck. It's not caused by um, the fundamental. I mean, obviously there's a lot of contributing factors and bad luck is one of them. Meddling priests are another one. But to me, the real thing that causes the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet is this moment right here on page 15, where Romeo says, um, my very friend hath got his mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, that an hour before hath been my cousin. O oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty has made me effeminate, and in my temper soften valor's steel. That, that, that he, Romeo blames Juliet. That she, falling in love with her, made him soft, made him effeminate, made him like a woman. That if he was a real man, he would have fought Tybalt with violence. He would have, right, he'd be in, he would have killed him in a duel, because Tybalt came looking for a duel. Um, and the reason Mercutio died is because Romeo tried to live a life of nonviolence, um, but ultimately he can't stick to it. And the tragedy results from this moment where Romeo says, I should not have been so effeminate. I should not have been so girly. And now, to prove his masculinity, he's going to kill Tybalt, which then gets him banished, which then gets Juliet to do the fake death thing, which then causes them both to die. So to me, this is the hinge of the play, um, is this moment right here when Romeo, um, he feels effeminate. He feels love has made him weak. And, and I, I think love made him strong. Um, he, he was strong enough not to fight Tybalt over some stupid nothing. Um, but he interprets it the other way and says, I got my friend killed. He's so upset about his friend being killed that he, he, he feels like it's, uh, it's, it's on him. Um, it's, uh, I, I really, I, it links the three plays we've looked at this semester. The Macbeth and Coriolanus and Romeo and Juliet um, all have some aspect of toxic masculinity, of men who are obsessed with violence and fighting and cannot live any other way. Pick it up in the next one.